Hello, my name is Shin Yunza. Today, I am going to talk about how false news can spread. Before proceeding with the presentation, I will introduce the table of contents. I will talk about the reason for topic selection and next, a summary of the video. And I will introduce another example of circular reporting. Finally, I will talk about what I learned and think. First, I wrote the essay about the topic of fake news in Jackson teacher's class, so I was curious about how false news can spread and affect us. First of all, they said, in previous decades, most news with global reach came from several major newspapers and networks with the resources to gather information directly. The speed with which information spread now, however, has created the ideal conditions for something called circular reporting. There are three main categories of video. First, circular reporting. It means when publication A publishes misinformation, publication B reprints it, and publication A then cites B as the source for the information. Second, an example in a video. The 1998 publication of a single pseudo-scientific paper arguing that routine vaccination of children causes autism inspired an entire anti-vaccination movement. Deliberately unvaccinated children are now contracting contagious disease. Lastly, they said, avoiding sensationalized media, searching for criticisms of suspicious information, and tracing the original source of a report can help you slow down a lie. Next, I will introduce another example of circular reporting. First is the Iraq war. In 2001, the Nigar Iranian forgeries, documents initially released by SISMI, seemed to depict an attempt made by Saddam Hussein in Iraq to purchase yellow cake uranium powder from Nigar during the Iraq disarmament crisis. They were referenced by other intelligence agencies to convince their government or the public that such purchases had taken place. In 2014, the chairman of the U.S. Senate report on pre-war intelligence on Iraq told NBC's team research that a single informant, Kurt War, had provided 98% of the assessment as to whether or not the Iraq is had a biological weapon. This was even though nobody inside the U.S. government had ever actually spoken to the informant except Pentagon analyst who concluded the man was an alcoholic and utterly useless as a source. The second example is the novel name Roots. Author Alex Haley grew up hearing the oral history that his family first ancestor to enter the United States was a young man named Kunta Kinte. As an adult, he researched his family genealogy for what would become the novel roots. He met a man named Keba Fofana in the town of Jaffer who was able to relate a story of Kunta Kinte that was strangely similar to his lifelong family history, an apparent confirmation that grounded his novel. After publication, however, it was discovered that Griot oral histories were not really able for dates before the 19th century, that Fofana was not a true Griot, and that Fofana's confirmation of his history was ultimately a retelling of the story himself told Gambian experts. The last one is what I learned and think. I usually only doubt about how to respond to fake news, but after watching this video, I know learning the source of fake news spreading. Furthermore, it seems worth thinking about what to do in the future to prevent the source of circular reporting. Thank you for listening.